Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Roysom. In this video, we begin a detailed discussion of load cells by avoiding problems in the first place by best practices design. One of the most common fallacies of load cell sizing is that more is better with regard to wrap angle. Instead, a better way to view the issue is that you need enough wrap angle. Anything more is fine as long as it didn't cost you much time or money or increase the tendency to wrinkle or cause some other issue. Wrap angle is just one of many tools we have to getting sufficient measurement resolution. More are given on the next slide. What we need to do is to be able to achieve repeatable tension control or readouts. For example, if we desire to control the 5% of tension, we will need to be able to resolve the lightest design tensions to a few percent. Since load cell sizing is usually easier than drive sizing and control, we usually allocate less of the total error to the measurement. Most good load cells are able to achieve accuracies and resolutions on the order of a few tenths of 1% of rated load. You can back calculate or check whether your load cell is sized properly using values such as this. One of the design challenges for sizing load cells is for very light tensions, as you might find on tissue paper, for example. This is made more challenging as width increases. These cases are often likened to trying to weigh a pea in a dump truck. So referring to our previous design criteria, we need to be able to resolve tensions sufficiently. This can be done using any or all of the following techniques. For tissue and other light products, we may indeed need to use most or all of these tricks. Most of the techniques try to increase the signal to tear weight of the system so that you can cut the load cell size to minimum for maximum sensitivity without overload. Another related challenge is to accommodate a very wide range of products. Here, we can have a dual routing of the web to give a high wrap angle for light products for maximum sensitivity and a low wrap angle for heavy products so that you don't need to upsize the load cell. Alternatively, you could have two different load cells and routings, but that is electrically and mechanically more costly. Overloads are a regular part of the real world. You don't want to have these events damage the cell so that it needs to be re-zeroed or, worse yet, replaced. These events can come from any number of different sources, such as web breaks, web wraps, and something bumping or even just tapping the load cell roller. Overload protection means that the cell will not be damaged, even though momentarily the signal will be clipped and thus unusable. Of course, we could just increase the size of the load cell to accommodate lo overloads. This is, in effect, what electrical overload protection does. It is just a derating of the cell. However, as hinted in the previous slides, sensitivity will suffer, perhaps to the point of making low tension readings not good enough. Thus, the better way is to find and select those few load cell models that have internal stops to prevent the cell from moving too far into the damage region. Almost all purely mechanical scales have such stops. The challenge is with the very common strain gauge cells that we often use in the web industry where travel is less than the thickness of a human hair. Designing the internal stops here is challenging. Of course, there are larger travel designs, but we may run into other problems when we go that route. The potential problems with large travel load cells include roller misalignment and mechanical vibration, possibly including resonance. Thus, in summary, load cells have sometimes had a bad reputation as not being mill duty. However, this is not inherent to load cells. It is rather just poor design choices and the sensor selection made by the machine builder. 
I have not seen an application where a very skilled designer could not obtain a trustworthy tension signal. Electrical noise is ever present in our plants and is one of the bigger risks for load cell problems. We don't want that noise to ever talk to our load cells. Again, we start with good design practices that avoid the problem in the first place by keeping the cell and especially wiring well away from high voltage or high amperage wiring such as motors, static bars, corona treaters, and other devices. The next step in avoidance would be to use onboard amplifiers that push more robust signals through this risky space. The signals from best to worst include 4 to 20 milliamps, that is nearly bulletproof, to digital signals which are usually okay, and the 0 to 5 volt analog signals which are getting risky. Here, we don't even list the millivolt signals that would be the case for remote amplifiers as they are, in my mind, never mill duty or safe enough to run any distance. Resonance may be inevitable at any but the lowest of speeds. One of the first or lowest resonances you are likely to run into on your machine is load cell roller resonance. The reason is that the load cell is softer or more flexible than almost any other machine or frame component. This resonance can wreck the signal to noise ratio of the tension signal. I have seen many cases where the vibration was 10 times the size of the signal during resonance. So the place to start is to select stiff cells. Stiffness is defined as the maximum travel or deflection under maximum load. Strain gauge cells tend to be stiffer than most other load cell types. Of course, rollers need to be stiff as well, and you get some of that merely by proper sizing for deflection. Finally, the frames have to be stiff, which is way beyond the scope of this video, but spring rates in the range of 1,000 to 1 million pounds per inch is common with medium and large equipment. Next, we use all of our best practices to size for light tensions as described earlier. Whether you reach resonance or not, balancing to G2.5 or even super balancing to G1.0 is a cost-effective way to reduce vibration. The electrical engineer has two final tasks. That is first to make sure that none of the amplifiers ever clip during vibration or especially during resonance, otherwise the mean or average will be shifted. Finally, they should filter and just try and ignore the rest as the drive will usually just ignore the high frequency component as well. Thank you so very much for watching this module in my plant practical series. If you have trouble with load cells or tension control or any other web handling problem, just give me a shout. I might just be able to help you sort it all out.